the U.S. and China must find a way to cooperate at COP26, which, which uh, the climate summit taking place in Glasgow, Scotland, and beyond. Otherwise, global climate action is not going to be possible. Now, uh, I'm going to leave, uh, as I'm going to be reading the article for you from the conversation, I'm going to have you watch uh, the Null School uh, to see, so you can see what's going on with the particulates and uh, especially the pollution coming out from China, which is about 26% of the total pollution in the world, Russia, India, uh, because there are countries that are major world polluters, and from what I understand, China and Russia will not be attending the COP26 in Glasgow, because uh, the countries coming, about 130 countries, I think, uh, are all going to have packages as to what they're going to do concerning uh, zero or well, uh, curbing carbon emissions, uh, carbon dioxide emissions, what programs they will have, and I guess China and Russia doesn't want to do that. China says, we don't need anybody telling us what to do. We already know that they're having uh, an energy crisis and they're supposedly only working three days a week. We know that there's a back, backlog of, uh, backlog of pro products that are coming into various countries that are not being received on time. And uh, it seems that everybody's relying on China for various products. We also have tremendous shipping backlogs, not only in the United States, but also in other countries, because of the fact that they can't uh, offload the containers on time. So, uh, concerning this, a week out from COP26 climate negotiations in Glasgow, all eyes are on two nations, China and the United States. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. So here we are at Null School, and uh, here we have the Earth, of course, and we have the chemo mode is on chemical, and we have, let's go to CO2, which is carbon dioxide. Okay, we have carbon dioxide here, and, um, sorry, the color codes, okay, going back, let's go to China, okay, Europe has a lot, as you can see, New York, East Coast has a lot, as you can see, let's go to China, okay, there you go. China and Russia, okay? This is it. Let's have it there. I'll have it there for you. Uh, you want to go see some else? Carbon monoxide. Okay, the blue, of course, is uh, more intense. Uh, carbon dioxide. The blue, light blue, is more intense. Uh, look at this. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Uh, and nitrogen. Okay, the uh, dark brown is the more intense. Going back. Okay, let's go to our carbon dioxide. All right, we'll have that. Just for reference, look at it spreading over the Pacific there. For reference that we have there, of course, you also have the currents taking this around. You can see this being pushed around. Okay, let's go back to um, China. Okay, right there. Okay, so you can watch that as I'm reading it for you. So, um, all eyes are on China and the United States. Together, the superpower is responsible for more than 40% of global carbon emissions. Where's the United States? There we go. Okay. We also have Russia, of course, up there. Okay. Uh, can we see both together? I guess not because we have, well, let's do it this way. Okay. Good. That's the United States, and this is China. This is Russia. 
um, more than 40% of global carbon emissions. U.S.-China relations have been fract uh, fractious in the recent years. Whether they can cooperate on climate action is crucial to success, of course, at the COP26 and beyond. U.S. progress on climate change went backwards under the Trump administration, but President Biden brought the nation back to the table. Biden wants to cooperate with China in this crucial policy sphere, raising hopes of a less adversarial bilateral relationship. Through 2021, though, U.S.-China relations have become increasingly strained, and China's cooperation at COP26 is far from guaranteed. President Xi Jinping of China is reportedly unlikely to attend these negotiations. And from what I, my, I saw yesterday, I think Putin is not going to come either. Now, together, China uh, of Russia. Now, China and the U.S. could supercharge global, pro global progress on climate action, but if they fail to cooperate, the two nations risk a race to the bottom on climate change with dire consequences, of course, for the whole planet. An emissions snapshot, China currently accounts for 28% of global carbon emissions, while its emissions rose rapidly during the 2000s and a good part of 2010. Emissions growth has slowed in recent years thanks to dedicated government efforts to improve energy security and promote renewable energy. China made its first international commitments on climate change at the 2015 Paris Climate Talks, including a pledge for carbon emissions to peak around 2030. In 2017, U.S. President Donald Trump pledged to withdraw from the Paris Agreement, giving China the chance to take the global leadership mantle on climate change. It looked like China might assume this role when last year it pledged to become carbon neutral by the year 2060. China is on track to achieve its 2030 renewable energy and carbon intensity targets, but the target is considered inconsistent with the global goal of limiting warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius this century. In the U.S., Biden has pledged to reverse the climate policy damage wrought by the Trump presidency and he will pursue ambitious national initiatives and international cooperation, including with China. But as we said, China is not going to the, the Glasgow uh, Climate Summit. And uh, they're, you know, I don't know, when, does anybody really know what China is doing? I mean, look at the, the property market that's going bust uh, with Evergrade and other things going bust. And, you know, they were building all these cities that lie empty. And uh, the property market is going downhill. And it may take the global economy with it. A lot of people from the West have invested in Chinese stocks, uh, thinking that you know that, that this communist nation would uh, be uh, up and, ab and above board. But who knows what they're doing? Um, and now we saw that they have a, the energy crisis, and uh, they're cutting back on energy. People are producing by candlelight. We heard, and now their latest I heard, they're only working three days a week. There's a backlog of orders they haven't filled, and uh, a lot of countries are relying on Chinese production, which is, I think, you know, a mistake, um, because that's one way that China can control people, other countries, that is. But anyway, going back to this, uh, by September, China's, um, oh no, sorry, the uh, on, uh, on again, off again China plan. In April this year, Biden sent U.S. climate envoy John Kerry to China to discuss collective climate action. And during the visit, the two countries released a joint statement declaring a commitment to cooperate. However, by September, China's tune had changed. Last month, during Kerry's second visit to China, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi declared, cooperation on climate change cannot be divorced from the overall situation of China-U.S. relations. So you know what, they're, they're using that as an excuse now, okay? This statement implied China would withhold cooperation on climate change until the U.S. gave ground on broader strategic issues. Examples include the U.S. relaxing its stance on visa restriction on Chinese students and members of the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, and their family sanctions against Chinese leaders, 
officials and government agency lists as its uh, requisite to extradite Huawei executive Men Wanzhou from Canada over fraud allegations. You see? All these things, they're putting all these things in the same basket. But as ever, the relationship is complex. Shortly after Kerry's visit to China, President Biden and, and Xi Jinping spoke on the phone covering topics including climate change. Two weeks later, Xi announced that China will no longer build new coal-fired uh, power projects abroad. But we cannot deduce from this announcement that China has decided to cooperate with the U.S. on climate. China has been scaling back its financial uh, financing of coal-fired power stations abroad for years. Now there's a fork in the road. Cooperation between China and the U.S. will remain highly unpredictable. The key question is whether competition between the two nations on climate action will be constructive or destructive. Under a constructive scenario, the U.S. and China would complete to ramp up their investments in clean energy, advance their technological capabilities, and build internationally competitive industries. They would also compete to help energi emerging countries reduce their emissions. Okay, let's go a little bit here. Okay. That's China. This is Russia, of course. This is China right here. Most of, uh, most of uh, I think, uh, half of the population lives towards the coast. I guess there's mountainous regions there towards Mongolia, okay. Um, so, um, China and the U.S. would both seek to prove the superiority of their respective governance models by making rapid progress on climate change. In other words, does China's party state, the Communist Party, quasi-communist model offer the most desirable path forward, or is it the U.S. model of democratic capitalism the better option? By contrast, destructive competition between the U.S. and China would have dire consequences for the climate. First, it would make the international flow and diffusion of green technologies difficult. For example, the U.S. controls advanced semiconductor technologies required for electric vehicles, EVs, while China is leading the world in EV battery technologies. If the nations began restricting tech experts, exports to each other, advancement in electric vehicles would significantly slow. It may also become more complex to establish global standards for new major clean energy technologies, such as offshore wind systems. Global markets for particular clean energy technologies would become fractured and much smaller than they would uh, otherwise be. With the reduction, with the reduced market size, new climate technologies and products would then take longer to become affordable, slowing their global uptake. Second, an effective system for global climate governance requires most nations, if not all, to participate. Yet without trust between the U.S. and China, such a system would be untenable. Let's go, instead of uh, just having the carbon dioxide, let's go to uh, carbon monoxide. Look at, the, look at that. Amazing. Amazing. Let's go. U.S. has almost nothing. A little bit around uh, New York. Okay, you can see the carbon monoxide. <laughs> India. Okay, Russia, Russia, and China. I mean, you know, a picture has, it says a thousand words here. Okay, um, so now, in the U.S., hawkish politicians and media would likely denigrate the administration's position on climate change as its uh, political weakness when dealing with China. The Chinese ruling party would likely face rising national nationalist sentiment against further climate actions, which would be viewed as caving to the U.S. demands. You see, they're already just now working three days a week. You know, people, people have bought their products, prepaid for their products, and their products are delayed. They may not be coming for Christmas. They may not be coming at all. What do you do in such a case when your client has prepaid you for the, for the you know, the clothes or the shoes or whatever, 
and you don't have the product to give them. I mean, there's lawsuits that are going to be going all, all over the place. <laughs> um, anyway, the nationalist view has long argued that the West presses China on climate action simply to hold back the country's development. How the U.S. and China act and react on climate issues will continue to be of supreme importance at COP26 and beyond, but it's the long-term competitive dynamics between the two countries that will fundamentally determine global climate action. This is from the conversation on fizz.org. Uh, what can I tell you? I mean, th this, is ter this is just terrible. Forget Fukushima, you know, polluting uh, all this radiation emptying into the... Uh, they're, 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 they're throwing the water into the uh, Pacific Ocean now. But you can see, this is carbon monoxide levels. East Coast there. Okay. This is the Ukraine around there. Eastern Russia. And India and China. Look at that. Amazing. Look at this. Look, it's almost black. And look at this. It's amazing. Amazing. And carbon monoxide again. I'm going to tell you. <clears throat> okay, so I'll leave links below for you for this. Also, with Null School, you can even see the. Um, where's the weather? Sorry. Space mode. Oh, the currents. Okay. Currents. Air. Air. Okay. Air currents. Let's see what's happening with the West Coast. Okay, the air. And the East Coast. In the video before this one, you see that we have storm warnings for the West and uh, the East as well. And the uh, ocean. Oh, let's go to the temperature. Woo! Okay. There you go. Temperature, temperature, and temperature. Okay. And ocean, ocean. There you go. It's a nice, a nice thing to look at once in a while. Okay. And we'll go back to our chemicals. Okay, so I'll leave that for you so you can play around with that to see what you want to find. You and have Antarctica activity as well. Right there. Okay, thank you for your support and please leave your comments. Thank you.